Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be unboxing, setting up and reviewing this Elgato video capture software and hardware. So I purchased this on Amazon for about $100. After doing a lot of research, it seems to be the product that's most reliable and has the best reviews and best quality. So let's uh, see what's in the box and give it a try. So my reason for purchasing this is because I have an old VCR and I have a lot of old VHS tapes. I also have several tapes at my parents' house which are recorded on this small Sony Handycam camera. So I want to get those and put them into digital format so that they can move to the next generation of technology. So basically on the box here it shows the hardware that you get and it also says right here that it includes the uh, software. But interesting enough, right here on the side, it says an internet connection is required to download the software. So I'm not sure which one it is. So let's have a look inside and see what we get. Okay, it has some pictures of some of the setups that you could use. And there's this little adapter piece. I'm not going to be using that. Let's put that aside. And then RCA cables, which is great, which of course you're going to need. And then of course the device itself. Feels like it's pretty decent quality. The wires aren't too thin. USB, of course. And then it has S-Video and then the component cables. Plastic on the device. Yeah, feels like it's pretty decent quality. So let's have a look at what's needed for software. So basically what I've done is I googled the Elgato video capture software for Windows 10 and then that takes me to this link here where I can download the software and the driver. So I've already gone ahead and done that. So we're going to install the drivers first. So right click and run as administrator. Yes. Install. Would you like to install this device software? Yes. Next. Successful. Okay, now I'm going to right click and install the, the video capture software. Run. Why is it taking me to Edge all of a sudden? That's so weird. Okay, this application requires a .NET Framework 3.5. Please install .NET Framework and run the installer again. So this is a brand new machine with Windows 10 installed on it. There are no further updates required. However, it's telling me that the .NET Framework 3.5, which I believe is an old version, is required. So I did a quick check in my registry and the version of .NET that I'm currently running is 4.7. However, this wants me to run 3.5. I'm actually gonna go ahead and download it and see what happens. It wants you to download some junk, so I'm saying no thanks to that. Okay, yes, let's run it. So now it's gonna download the required files so it can do the upgrade. So the download seems to have finished and it's automatically doing the install. Okay, it was successful. Let's close that. And now I'm going to rerun the installer. Install. Yes. Next. Agree. Install it there. Install. Yes. finish and that should do it so let's minimize the windows and now we have a new icon on the desktop so i'm a little bit disappointed with that process of having to go back to version 3.5 for the dotnet framework but anyways let's just uh, carry on and uh, get this tested so uh, get the vcr here and i'll plug this into my rca cables which it comes with, which is definitely a plus. So the yellow into the yellow, of course. White into white. And red into red. 
And then the same thing with the other ends on the back of your VCR or analog data source. So then yellow into yellow, white into white, and red into red. Now I'm gonna plug the USB connection into the computer. Okay, what is the name of this movie? Let's just call it testing, because that's all I'm doing right now to make sure this works. Approximate length of the movie. Um, I'm not sure if it does that just so it can calculate how much space you have on your system or if it shuts off after that given amount of time. So let's just for a test put in a, the lowest I can which is 10 or I can go custom and put in 2 minutes. And under preferences you get to specify where you want the, uh, the files to be saved. So under general Let's zoom in a little bit. So right now it's being saved um, to my videos folder, which is fine. Uh, high resolution, needs a fast PC, that's fine. Automatically check for updates. I'm gonna turn that off for now. So under video, we can do all that in post-processing, all the brightness and contrast and saturation. And then the audio, I'm just gonna leave that as is. So let's continue. So there's no signal coming in right now. The uh, RCA is selected and four by three. So let's uh, get try to get this VCR started. All right, so we're in business. So let's say uh, continue. This, this shows that there's audio coming through. So I automatically stop recording after two minutes, or I can have it continue and mute the sound. So if I don't want to include the sound, I can just mute it. But I do, and I do want to stop the recording after two minutes. So start. So in the meanwhile, let's go look in the videos folder. So you can see that there is some action right here in this time shift folder. Uh, some things have started, to, some new files have been added. So that obviously has something to do with this recording. I'm not sure if that's the final destination for these files or if that's just a temporary location. So the two minutes is up and the file has stopped recording. So let's just look in the videos folder. There's a folder in there called EVC temp. There's some files in there still. So that's gonna continue on the video capture program. So the movies are being processed. Now it gives you the option of what you want to do next. It shows you it's saved in uh, as testing for. Right here, so if we go ahead and open that. Hurry with a rocket, get it? Okay, what time is it? It's goalie time. Okay, so what do you want to do next? Play it with media player. So I don't want to do anything next with it because I had the file that I want and I'm just going to leave it as that. So a two minute file, let's look at its properties. Is 36.2 megs. And we'll say quit. So that's it, that temporary folder disappeared and we're left with that uh, one testing.mp4 file. So in conclusion, I was not happy with the uh, .NET setup that I had to do. That was a little bit confusing, especially for somebody who is not a techie. They might uh, have that to be a brick wall and might not uh, continue from there. Uh, overall though, the quality uh, is really good. The software is really good once you do get it up and running. Uh, so I definitely recommend this product. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see what else I'm up to, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.